Look at uh, Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like unto a man that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire labourers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the labourers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also uh, into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. And saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, or the evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the labourers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came uh, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the goodman of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour. In other words, they've only worked for one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way, and I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. What does that mean? Many are called. You see, the gospel message goes out to very many people. And I'm trying to preach the gospel this afternoon unto you, that you would come to faith in Christ, that you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God through faith alone in Him. Many are called. That is, the gospel goes out to many people. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him, that is, of Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You see, those who are chosen are the ones that put their faith in Christ. And I'm here to tell you, without faith in Christ, you're headed for hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Is He your Saviour? You need to make Him yours personally. So this message goes out to all of us. And we need to respond to it. We need to come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, many are called, that is, the gospel call, but few are chosen. Few respond to the message in the right way. You see, you will respond to it. You'll either reject or neglect, uh, neglect or reject the Lord Jesus Christ, and remain in an unsafe condition, heading down to hell because of your sins that have not been forgiven. Or you'll respond in the positive way, in the right way that God wants you to respond to it, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God. Your soul can be saved. You can have peace with God. The Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm here to tell you this afternoon, there is no other way of salvation. Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no way to heaven. 
We cannot be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on him for your eternal salvation? We need forgiveness for our sins. And that's only possible through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and our right response to that. He shed his precious blood that day on that cross in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, who is to make fun of, and to scourge, that is to whip, and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Praise the Lord for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ on the third day after he was crucified. He said, No man taketh my life from me, I lay it down to myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my father. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered, and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. He said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. When the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. So they were very angry against these two brothers. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister or your servant. For whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister or to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Lord Jesus Christ has given his life a ransom for many upon the cross of Calvary. But we've got to come to him. We've got to respond to the love of God. Otherwise, there's nothing else left for us but the wrath of God. Now, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But I would, what would you rather have, the wrath of God or the love of God? The salvation of God or the damnation of God? Yes, the forgiveness of God or the damnation? The judgment of God to fall upon you? Now this will fall upon you if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. So the Lord Jesus Christ will either be your Saviour or will have to be your Judge. What will it be for you? Saviour or Judge? Heaven or Hell? Your eternal destiny, my friend, is all depending on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God. Your soul can be saved as a result of putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Well, they came to the right person. This is who you'll have to come to this afternoon. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, as it, as it were. You have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. There's no salvation apart from Christ. Salvation is bound up in a person. It's not in a man-made religion, my friend. Man-made religion will take us down to hell. It'll damn us to that terrible place called hell that God does not want us to go to. God wants you to be in heaven. 
only way he can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God who has made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the multitude rebuked them. In other words, the multitude told them off, these blind men, that were crying out for mercy, O Lord, thou Son of David, because they should hold their peace. They were trying to make them be quiet. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Praise the Lord for the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only the physical healing, but the spiritual healing. You and I, when we're born into this world, we are spiritually dead as far as God is concerned. We need to be made alive in Christ, my friend. We need to have the new birth. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this is so essential, my friend, to get right with God. You need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become children of God. And no, we're not all God's children. That's a fallacy, my friend. That's a trickery of the devil. Yes, look, we are made in God's image. That is correct. And according to his likeness, but we are not God's children. See, the Lord Jesus Christ had to be clothed with a body, that in that body he would taste death for every man. He, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man when he died upon the cross and was crucified for you and for me. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He desires to save your soul from a long and lost eternity. God does not want us to perish in that terrible place called hell. And when I say perish, I don't mean be annihilated. You see, eternal punishment is eternal. It's forever. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. No need to go there, my friend. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why I'm here this afternoon. I want you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe upon him and become a child of God and, and have forgiveness for your sins through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. There's absolutely no other way. There's no other way to heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And no, we're not God's children until we've been born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you prepared to put your faith in Christ for your eternal salvation? This is what's so urgently needed by each and every one of us, my friend. If we do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll be in hell at the moment of death. God does not want that for you, my friend. And that's why I come here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God commendeth, that means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In that sinful condition, the Lord Jesus Christ had enough compassion upon us to die upon the cross and be made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, your soul will be saved. You'll have forgiveness for your sins, everlasting life, and a home in heaven for all of eternity through faith in the person and in the finished work of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So again, what do you need to do? You need to come in repentance toward God. Now that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. There was a question asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The simple answer is this, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou 
shall be saved. Put your faith in Christ right now, my friend, before it's forever and eternally too late. See, the heaven or hell, your eternal destiny depends on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a wise choice this afternoon. Get right with God. Agree with God that you're a sinner and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There was preaching outside the uh, bus stop, which is the other side of the um, Beanley train station, basically. It's on a bit of a hill here. This is where I like coming to preach. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless you. Have a great day. chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21 and when they uh, drew nigh or near unto Jerusalem and we come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples saying unto them, Go into the village over against you and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. If any man say aught or anything unto you, Ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. So they laid them on the, on the ground where he was going to go. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of, pr of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves. In other words, they were selling things in there and they shouldn't have been. Should have been dedicated for a house of prayer. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. And said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany. And he uh, lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and found nothing thereof but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the uh, fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? 
Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily or truly I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I, will, uh, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, uh, whence was it? Or from where was it, in other words, from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented. In other words, he changed his mind and went. And he came to the second and said likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain, in other words, which of the two did the will of his father? They say unto him, the first. Jesus said unto them, Verily or truly I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots, that is the tax collectors, and the harlots, the despised people of the day, go into the kingdom of God before you. You see, these people here were self-righteous sort of people. And we have many people like that in the world today, don't we? You know, they're self-righteous, they think they were cut above everyone else and put other people down. But the thing is, God has put us all on the same level playing field, my friend. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of our sins, we're headed down to hell. And God was not happy with that, so he made the way of escape through the Lord Jesus Christ, sending his beloved Son to die upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me, to be crucified for you and for me. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Here another parable, there was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it uh, round about and digged a winepress in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, that he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said unto them, Did ye never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. He's speaking about himself here. The stone which the builders rejected. You see, the Jews had rejected their Messiah. They didn't recognise the Lord Jesus Christ for who he really is. 
King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's the Alpha and Omega. Yes, he's the one that you've got to come to know this afternoon as your saviour. Otherwise, he'll be your judge if you leave it too late. And I'm here to tell you that this uh, message is urgent. We must get right with God. You and I don't know when we're going to pass off into eternity. We don't know when we're going to leave planet Earth. Are you ready to meet God? You know, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And yet God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. We need to come in repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Have you received forgiveness for your sins? In other words, are you a child of God? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. But is he your saviour? You need to make him yours personally. Otherwise, he'll be your judge. So it says here, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He's been exalted in heaven and made very high by his Father and he's waiting for you to believe on him. He's waiting for you to put your faith in him. And if you do put your faith in him, he will be your saviour. But if not, he'll be your judge. What will it be for you? Salvation or damnation? Heaven or hell? Your eternal destiny depends on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. In other words, meaning the Jews as a nation have given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. In other words, if we fall upon the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance, we'll be broken in repentance, understanding that we're sinful. And we've sinned before the Lord. We need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way of forgiveness is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed upon the cross of Calvary. But on whomsoever it shall fall, that is, the Lord Jesus Christ shall fall, on whomsoever the Lord Jesus Christ will fall, it will grind him to powder in judgment. Who would you rather have, a saviour or a judge? It's up to you. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ goes out throughout the whole world, even here in the land of Oz still, it goes forth. And you need to make a decision. You will either believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or you'll continue to reject or neglect him and finish up dying and going down to hell because you do not have the only saviour for us poor sinners when we're born into this world. Look, God wants to make you a saint, my friend. God wants to give you his righteousness so that you can enter into heaven. We cannot enter into heaven because of our sin. We need forgiveness for those sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you believed on him? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? When the chief priests and Pharisees had heard this parable, they perceived that he, had, that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Well, obviously, he's more than a prophet. The Lord Jesus Christ is God in a body. God manifest in the flesh. You see, God was manifest in the flesh. God came down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ to die upon the cross for you and for me. But first of all, he lived the perfect life that you and I could never, ever live. And then he died the perfect death upon the cross. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the spirit. He said, as I said earlier when I was preaching, no man taketh my life from me. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And so the Lord Jesus Christ voluntarily 
lay down his life for you and for me because he loves you and I so very, very much. I'm sure you've heard this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I wonder, have you believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? You have to do that to be in heaven, my friend. You won't be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't trust in man-made religion, my friend. It will all lead you down to hell. It's all just a farce. It's a deception from the devil. We've got to come God's way, and God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. If we put our faith in Christ, our soul will be saved. Repentance toward God, as I've said. Change your mind. Agree with God that you're a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Remember, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way that we can be in heaven. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Well, I was preaching um, just outside of Beanley Marketplace. I don't know if you can read that anyway. No, I can't seem to zoom in outside Beanley Marketplace where there's people going past and going in and out of the shops. Anyway, have a great day. God bless you. Thanks for watching.